obedience to Abba Father, I am sending out this word today to blow the shofar and to sound the alarm and to bring to your attention a very, very serious prophetic warning from Scripture that is relevant right now on Monday the 8th of April 2024. As you are aware, a very significant solar eclipse is currently taking place over America. Jim Staley from Passion for Truth and many other ministries have sent out excellent videos sharing all the information about the solar eclipse that is presently taking place and so I don't need to repeat any of that. In my personal opinion, Jim Staley's video was one of the best. The link to it is shown on the screen and is also in the description below this video. And it will tell you all the important things that you need to know about this eclipse. But what Abba Father has specifically instructed me to do is to tell you the prophetic meaning of the solar eclipse and what the specific prophetic warning is in scripture that this eclipse is pointing to because it contains a critically serious warning for America and God has life-saving instructions to his people concerning this and I can only trust him to cause you to hear his voice speaking truth through my voice and no matter where you are in the world you really really need to listen to this whole video from beginning to end because this is very 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 serious but before I say anything further I just want to emphasize that the purpose of biblical prophecy is not for fear its purpose is to warn, to prepare, and to give wisdom and discernment. Because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. As God said in Genesis 1 verse 14, apart from giving light, His purpose for the sun, moon, and stars is for signs and seasons. Meaning, that the sun, moon and stars in the sky is God's notice board to let his people know about a very important and significant prophetic event from scripture that is about to take place. A solar eclipse is specifically a warning of coming judgment and destruction. In this case, specifically to the United States of America, where America is soon going to experience a totally devastating attack. And this is particularly, without exaggeration, a life-saving message for Yahweh's righteous remnant in America, because he has some extremely important instructions for you at this time in his prophetic warning in Scripture about this event. But all Christians all over the world need to pay attention because what is about to happen to America will significantly affect every person on earth because when this event takes place, life as we know it will drastically change. At this point, I would also like to emphasize that I am not against America. I actually deeply care about the people of America, which is why I am taking the time to send out this warning. I have no political affiliation. The purpose of this video is to bring deeper revelation and understanding of scripture, especially with regards to what scripture prophesies about the end times, which is more relevant to us than any other generation in the past and to show you how it is relevant to our lives right now. And again, this is not for fear. The purpose of prophecy is to let you know ahead of time what is going to happen and why, so that when it does unfold, 
you won't go into fear, panic and confusion like the masses of people in the world will do. But you can say, OK, Abba Father, you told me that this was going to happen and why. And so I am ready to take your hand and walk with you through this time as I trust your plan in the process. Yesterday, I released a video on YouTube titled The Identity of the Antichrist and the False Prophet Revealed Through Scripture and Confirmed in the Way that History Has Unfolded Exactly as the Bible Said That It Would. The video will actually be a very helpful foundation for you to understand the context of this attack on America. But in that video, I explained the seven layers of meaning and seven prophetic fulfillments for the seven hills and seven kings of Revelation 17 verses 9 to 10. And there I explained in depth how the harlot of Babylon has a dual meaning, a spiritual meaning and then a physical practical meaning. Spiritually, the harlot that rides the beast is the harlot church, the counterfeit one world religion in the Babylon beast system of the Antichrist, which exists today in the form of Freemasonry, which is basically the Baal worship of Lucifer. The same one world mystery Babylon religion started by Nimrod in ancient Babylon which will be the same one world mystery Babylon religion of the end times in the new world order of the Antichrist. The headquarters of this mystery Babylon religion is at the Vatican in Rome, which is the city of seven hills on which this harlot of Babylon sits. But from a physical practical point of view, America has been set up by the Babylon beast system to play the role of the harlot of Babylon and be the vehicle through which the abominations of Babylon are spread throughout the entire earth, Hollywood being one example of many others. And America has been used in various ways to do the Babylon beast system's dirty work, so to speak to further the New World Order agenda of the Antichrist. And the reason that Abba Father allows America to be attacked is that it is part of his judgment on America for the role that America has played as the harlot of Babylon. And all that America and its leadership has done for the Antichrist beast system, as I will continue to explain later on. In biblical apocalyptic language, a hill can be a literal physical hill, but it can also be a country or nation or continent. And as the harlot of Babylon, America sits on seven hills, being the seven continents of the world militarily, in the sense that America has 800 military bases all over the world on every continent on earth. Now the Bible prophesies that there will be four key kings that step onto the world stage in the end times. And for the first time in history, all of them are in their place. You just have to look at the media to see it. In short, these four kings are what scripture calls the kings of the north, south, east and west where these directions are determined in reference to Israel, which in God's eyes, as well as geographically speaking, is the center of the earth. These four kings play a key role in the first two of the seven key biblical end time wars that are represented by the red horse of war in the book of Revelation which is firstly the destruction of America, and not long after that, World War III that revolves around Israel. 
which is the Gog Magog War in Scripture, which climaxes in the events described in Ezekiel 36 to 38 at the time of the abomination of desolation. The king of the north is Russia. The king of the east is China and also including North Korea. The king of the south is the Arabic Islamic nations of northern Africa and the Middle East, including Egypt, Iran, Turkey and Ethiopia. And the king of the west is Europe, who will later be led by the Antichrist. Scripture prophesies that these four kings will form an alliance, particularly led by Russia, and they will attack America from the north, which when looking at the round globe of the earth is from Russia over the top of Canada towards America. And there are many, many scriptures that describe an army of great nations attacking America from the north. Although having said that, America will be attacked by land and by sea. And scripture says that the entire country will be captured from end to end. And America will be surrounded by her enemies on every side in the day of her disaster. The cities where we know that a nuclear bomb will definitely be dropped is shown on the screen, although there will be many more places than those shown here. Scripture gives a lot of detail that tells us the places that are going to be hit with these nuclear bombs. Scripture says that the attack on America is going to come swiftly, suddenly, and unexpectedly. It's going to catch the American leadership and military by total surprise. But whilst the people in the world get caught off guard, it does not have to be that way for God's people. Because Scripture says that Abba Father does nothing without first revealing it to his people through his prophets and the prophecies in Scripture. And my task in this video is to alert you to his warnings in the prophecies that this eclipse is pointing to in Scripture. And then following this short video, within the next three to six weeks, I will be releasing two very detailed videos sharing everything that scripture has to say about the soon coming attack on America. The first video explains in detail why America is going to be attacked. And then the second video is going to explain how this attack is going to unfold. And each video is over seven hours long because that is how much scripture has to say about this event. And it has literally taken me three years to put these videos together. Because this is extremely serious. And Abba Father told me to do a thorough job of it. For a long time, I didn't even know that America was in the Bible. But the soon coming destruction of America is such a significant end time event that it is extensively prophesied about in over 16 chapters of the Bible, in both the Old and New Testament, giving incredible detail of exactly how it is going to play out. The attack on America is going to consist of three waves or three main events, one after the other. It first begins with an EMP attack, and for those who may not know what that is, EMP stands for Electromagnetic Pulse Attack.
I was working on the computer and then all of a sudden, one of the sites that I was on, it had breaking news, Russia attacks and then everything in the house goes black. I saw a calendar, it was turning turn the month of November. It had shadows flickering all over it. I saw this light in the sky, a big light, very large, bright light, and then darkness. Detonated miles up in the atmosphere, experts say. The main impact is electrical, energy that doesn't kill people but spreads like lightning, striking any electrical grid or circuitry, feeding into them, burning them out. Whole cities could go dark. An EMP attack is a weapon device which sends out an electromagnetic pulse that is silent and undetectable and which basically is able to completely destroy all electrical circuits and electronic systems, which means the shutting down of all electricity and power grids across the entire country. And not only that, but anything that is electronically run will be damaged or disabled and unable to run, which by this point in the world today is nearly everything. All computer systems and networks destroyed, all memory of digitally stored information wiped out, such as in banks, businesses, etc. No possibility of communications, no phones, no method of transport, because all cars and vehicles today have an electronic component in them required for them to run. And that's one of the reasons why scripture says that the American military won't even have the chance to be able to even lift a single weapon in defense when America is attacked. Because all military equipment, weapons, aircraft, etc., have electronic control systems critical for their operation, which would have been destroyed by the EMP attack. This is an article from the 3rd of September 2020 from the American Homeland Security website speaking about a potential EMP attack. And then here is another mainstream article also released in 2020 showing China and its capacity for an EMP attack. Interestingly, also mentioning Russia, North Korea, Iran, and international terrorists from Arabic Islamic countries. Remember, that these are the same four kings that scripture prophesies will form an alliance to attack America. Amazing how what scripture prophesied thousands of years ago is starting to play out in the media before our very eyes. So the American military ends up being like helpless sitting ducks and scripture specifically describes how the entire American military will be wiped out. Both the soldiers themselves, as well as all of the military equipment. And again, this is not to bring fear, but to give you a realistic understanding of the terrible magnitude of this event. And then I'm going to explain Abba Father's plan for the protection of his people concerning this. Isaiah 13 verse 6 gives a glimpse of how terrifying this day is going to be for the American soldiers in the military. Scream in terror, for the day of Yahweh has arrived. It will come as a destruction from the Almighty. Because of this, all hands will go limp. Every heart will melt with fear. Terror, pain and anguish will seize them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another, their faces flushed with fear. There is a multitude of scriptures all saying the same thing in the context of the attack on America, describing how the military soldiers bend over in fear and anguish like a woman having a very painful labor in childbirth. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the general population in America is about 350 million people, which means that 350 million souls will no longer be with us after this event. The greatest massacre 
in all of history up until this point. You must understand that this is an event like the world has never seen. And right from the first minute of the attack, the entire American military is taken out. And scripture says that there will be nobody there to help America. Minutes after the EMP, the second wave is a multitude of nuclear bombs that are going to be dropped on multiple cities all at once, where America is going to be attacked from the north at the top and from side to side, from west coast to east coast, as I said before. And scripture says that there is no escape from this. All escape routes, even for the military, are blocked. Many scriptures that prophesy of America's attack speak about America being destroyed by fire until the entire country is just a burnt heap of rubble. And there is so much smoke clouds that it blocks out the sun and the entire land is covered in darkness. And multiple scriptures prophesy that America will fall suddenly and swiftly, and that the entire United States of America will be destroyed within one single hour. The entire attack and war on America takes place within one single day. And Putin is famous for casually saying at a dinner party that he could destroy America in half an hour or less, and he's not bluffing. Not only does Abba Father warn his people through prophecies in scripture, but scripture also prophesies that in the end times, he will pour out his Holy Spirit on his people, who will prophesy, have visions and dream dreams, through which he will also warn his people about significant and important prophetic events when they are about to unfold. And if you go and look on YouTube or the internet, you will not see hundreds, but literally hundreds of thousands of people sharing very detailed warning dreams that Abba Father has given them about the very soon coming attack on America. And if anybody watching this video has had one of those dreams warning about America's attack, Please support us in getting this message out by writing your dreams in the comments below this video so that people can start to see the reality of what I am saying. If you go look on the internet, you will see that the content of many of these dreams is exactly what scripture prophesies will happen concerning the attack on America. For example, thousands of people have had prophetic warning dreams about thousands of Russian and Chinese soldiers on American soil. And that is exactly what scripture says will happen after the EMP attack, followed by all the nuclear bombs. The third wave of this attack is where hundreds of thousands of enemy troops are going to swarm into every part of the United States of America. And what they will do is exactly what the Hamas terrorists did to the people of Israel on October 7th, except exponentially worse, if that is even possible to imagine. Scripture says that they will go after everybody in America that survived the nuclear bombs, and they will stab and kill everybody that they find. Many scriptures, such as Isaiah chapter 13, describe how extremely cruel and merciless these soldiers will be, especially with the women and children, raping them and doing things that are just too terrible to speak. And that's why, body of Christ worldwide, you need to pay attention to this terribly dire warning of this April 8th solar eclipse. And all of us as a body of Christ worldwide need to fast and pray and do everything possible within our personal means 
to warn our brothers and sisters in Christ in America. Oh, Abba Father, how I wish the children could be spared of this. And just like the Hamas terrorists took hostages, so scripture says that tens of thousands of Americans are going to be taken as prisoners to every nation on earth. But unlike some of the Israeli hostages who were rescued, scripture says that there will be no one to rescue the Americans. And after this attack, multiple scriptures say that there will not be one single person left in the land and nobody not one single person will ever live in the united states of america ever again after this attack the entire country of the united states of america is going to be permanently completely totally utterly destroyed that is the dire prophetic warning of the solar eclipse today on the 8th of April 2024. Now a good question that comes to many people's minds is that if so many nuclear bombs are dropped all at once, surely there would be so much radioactive waste that it would poison the atmosphere of the entire world. But actually no. Scripture describes the people of America's faces being aflame with the effects of unprecedented warfare. And multiple scriptures say that the type of nuclear weapons used in this attack have never been used before. And Zechariah chapter 12 describes this new type of nuclear weapon with impressive scientific accuracy. And this type of nuclear weapon, which is a neutron bomb, has not existed until recently. Jeremiah 50 verse 25 says, Yahweh has opened his armory and brought out his weapons of wrath, for this is the work of Yahweh of hosts in the land of Babylon. Scripture prophesied about the type of nuclear warfare that would be used in this attack on America, which for the first time in history is now in existence, and that is a neutron bomb. The effects of this end time type of nuclear weapon is described in Zechariah 14 verse 12, which says, their flesh will rot while they are still standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. The first atomic bombs involved splitting apart the nucleus of an atom, which results in the release of a tremendous amount of energy, producing the massive explosion that looks like a mushroom cloud. This was the type of bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan at the end of the Second World War. According to experts in this field, this type of atomic bomb cannot cause the effects described in Zechariah 14 verse 12. After that, a second generation of nuclear bomb was made called the thermonuclear bomb. This involves a process where hydrogen isotopes are fused together to form even heavier atoms, which when split releases an unimaginable amount of power, which would cause such massive destruction that it would make the first generation of nuclear bombs dropped on Japan look like a mere firecracker in comparison. And the devastation caused by the first generation nuclear bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was horrific. So one's mind cannot comprehend the terrifying devastation of a thermonuclear bomb. The third generation type of nuclear bomb is the neutron bomb. This bomb is similar to the thermonuclear bomb, except that a blanket of what is called heavy U-238 isotopes is removed from it. What this does to the bomb is it makes it release only a massive number of neutrons combined with gamma radiation at its detonation. 
When this bomb explodes, the release of the neutrons are lethal to humans and any other animal life around it. Anyone within the radius of a neutron bomb will be killed instantly. If a person is within the blast radius, what will happen to them is eerily similar to what Zechariah describes in chapter 14 of his prophecy. Any kind of flesh is destroyed by a kind of melting or burning process as all the atoms are destroyed within it. So Zechariah's description of the effects of a weapon that rots flesh, eyes and the tongue whilst a person is still standing before they even fall down dead on the ground accurately describes what happens at the detonation of a neutron bomb. And now we can understand exactly what Revelation 17 verse 16 practically means when it says that the New World Order Babylon beast system turns on the prostitute which is America and eats her flesh and burns her with fire. Because this type of fire that eats the flesh is exactly what happens to a person's body within the blast radius of a neutron bomb. The reason the military would choose a neutron bomb is because they are considered to be much cleaner than conventional nuclear weapons. A neutron bomb explosion will only kill living things, in other words, people and animals, but it would leave all the buildings in the area fairly intact. A neutron bomb will kill all the military soldiers, but would leave all of their armor and weaponry undamaged. Even soldiers who are in caves or bunkers deep below the earth will not escape the results of a neutron bomb blast. Remember I explained that both scripture and many prophetic dreams people have had describes America being flooded with a massive amount of enemy troops immediately after the bombs have exploded in the key strategic areas of America. With the first two generations of nuclear bombs, the invasion of enemy troops immediately after the explosion of the bombs would not be possible because of the deadly radioactive fallout in the atmosphere after the explosion of these bombs that would poison the region where the bombs exploded for a long time. But a neutron bomb does not leave any radioactive fallout behind after its detonation, and a person is safe walking in the area of the bomb blast very soon after the explosion, once the heat in the atmosphere has cooled down from the detonation. For the first time in history, a human weapon has the capability of doing what is described in Zechariah 14 verse 12, which is another confirmation that we are indeed living in the last days. And therefore we need to start preparing ourselves as wise virgins to be ready, because it means that the coming of Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah, is imminent. And also I find it phenomenal that so many thousands of years ago, the Bible predicted such advanced nuclear warfare with pinpoint accuracy, again showing that the Word of God is the Word of God, not just a book written by men. It is God-breathed and God-inspired, and we need to pay attention to what it is telling us. Revelation 17 verse 1 says, Come here, I will show you the judgment and doom of the great prostitute, the harlot idolatrous, who is seated on many waters, influencing nations. Revelation 14 verse 8 says, Then another angel followed him through the sky, shouting, Babylon is fallen, that great city is fallen because she made all the nations of the world drink the wine of her passionate immorality. America has been riding the beast for a long time. She has been the source that has spread 90% of the pornography, child pornography and spiritual filth 
and abominations of Babylon through her entertainment industries throughout the world, influencing billions of people and nations throughout the entire earth. Since the birth of America, she has served and fulfilled the purposes of the New World Order B system with all the wars that she has perpetuated. The blood sacrifices, all the innocent people and children murdered. They have been the police of the world with their 800 military bases on all seven continents. America has plundered the Earth's resources and they have filled the merchants, prominent businessmen and king's pockets with a vast amount of money and wealth. And her merchants have been the world's most important people. America has been used by the Antichrist beast system for many things to further the New World Order agenda of the Antichrist. But now, America has done her job for the Antichrist beast and fulfilled her role as the harlot that rides the beast. But in crude terms, what is a prostitute for? To be used for vile, selfish purposes and then thrown away like trash. And just as Revelation 17 verse 16 says, the Antichrist beast system she is riding will turn on the prostitute, betray her, and devour and destroy her, and burn her with fire. There is a parallel verse in Jeremiah 51 verse 34, which says, The king of Babylon has eaten and crushed us and drained us of strength. He has swallowed us like a great monster and filled his belly with our riches. He has thrown us out of our own country. <coughs> Habakkuk 2 verse 8 says, Because you have plundered many nations, the remnant of the people will plunder you because of your bloodshed against man and your violence. The plan to attack and destroy America has been in the pipeline for decades and in fact centuries, right from the time that America was founded. And the purpose of America's destruction as far as the international network of Freemasonry, New World Order B system is concerned, is that it is the final crisis that they need to orchestrate in order to finally bring in the New World Order. David Rockefeller, a very high ranking member of the globalist elite Illuminati that controls the international network of Freemasonry, once famously said, some even believe that we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world, if you will. If that is the charge, I stand guilty and am proud of it. In 1994, David Rockefeller gave a chilling speech where he said, This present window of opportunity, during which a truly peaceful and independent world order might be built, will not be open for too long. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. The crisis he was speaking of is the destruction of America. This is what will bring in the new world order and especially the one world economy, where all the currencies of individual countries are removed and a one world digital currency will be introduced that will be physically connected to a digital ID and mandatory vaccine passports, which is the final step before the mark of the beast, which is introduced at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Mandatory vaccine passports will come into effect before the attack on America. 
I have seen a lot of evidence in scripture and also in what is currently going on in the world that there is going to be another purposefully orchestrated pandemic in 2025. The first white horse of, Rep of Revelation represents seven key pandemics that will take place before Jesus' return. COVID in 2019 was the first. The one coming in 2025 is the second, which is going to provide the pretext for mandatory vaccine passports to be bought in. There is going to be several false flag events in 2024 and 2025 related to cyber attacks, which is going to provide the pretext for introducing a digital ID, which people will have to use every time they access the internet. And then the attack on America is going to provide the pretext to introduce the one world digital currency with a one world economy. Because the world's economic system has been purposefully set up in such a way that it is held up by the pillar of the US dollar, which is the current global currency. So when America falls, the US dollar will become worthless literally overnight. And then like a set of dominoes, global currencies all over the world will collapse. Scripture that prophesies about America's destruction also emphasizes how her seaports and sea freight industry will be totally destroyed. And merchants and businessmen all over the world will mourn at her destruction because many entire industries will literally evaporate overnight. And this is one of the major clues that points to America as the harlot of Babylon and not just the counterfeit one world religion whose headquarters are based on the city of Seven Hills in, Ro in Rome. Because Rome does not have any seaports and if Rome was destroyed, it would not have a catastrophic effect on the worldwide economy like America's destruction will. However, Whilst the destruction of America is orchestrated and perpetuated by those in the world that are a part of the kingdom of darkness Babylon system in order to carry out Lucifer's Antichrist New World Order agenda, Abba Father allows it because they are an instrument in his hand to bring about his judgment on the harlot of Babylon. In terms of America's involvement in serving the agenda of Babylon. But there are multiple levels of God's judgment, and I want to emphasize that this judgment on America is not the same as God's judgment that takes place in the Great Tribulation, which is exponentially worse, where the whole world will be judged for their idolatry, harlotry, and participation with the things of Babylon. And this is also not the same as God's ultimate judgment that takes place at the end of the final millennium, the great white throne judgment, where those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will be judged through a final separation from him for all eternity. The first phase of God's judgment that falls on America for the role America has played as the harlot of Babylon is actually Another call to the rest of the world to tell them to wake up. Abba Father uses this devastating attack on America as a mighty great shaking to attempt to wake up his sleeping church in spiritual slumber all over the world. And it is intended to call us to repent, to return to him and to get rid of all spiritual harlotry from our lives, where we are in worldliness and lukewarmness. That is why the solar eclipse is a signal from God to his people worldwide, calling us to fast and pray. Calling us back onto the highway of holiness, to leave behind worldliness and lukewarmness, 
and come back to a fasted first love lifestyle of holiness, which puts us into a position of being ready and prepared for when our Saviour, Messiah, Bridegroom and King returns to fetch the Bride of Christ for the marriage supper of the Lamb. In my childhood, I remember being quite critical of Jonah, thinking he was so stupid for trying to run from God. But I'm not so judgmental of Jonah anymore, because I now find myself in Jonah's shoes. And like Jonah, one of the reasons that I've held on to this message of warning about America's destruction for three years is because I do not want to give it. And I wish that God would call somebody else to do it. But I know better than to run away from God. And a few weeks ago, I had a personal warning from God that if I don't now share this message of warning, there is going to be personal consequences for me like Jonah. He told me to release it now, which was before I'd even heard or known about this April 8th solar eclipse going over America today. So this eclipse has been a great confirmation for me. And I've also realized that all has worked out for good because this is the right timing for the release of this message. If I had released it three years ago, very few people would have believed me. But with the recent Israel-Hamas war, with the kings of the north, south and east very much on the stage, showing the irritation with America at the United Nations, with America vetoing their resolutions for a ceasefire, I think now most people can see that a soon coming attack on America is not so far fetched. So I am now doing my part to share this message. And so your blood is now off my hands because I am giving you this warning and what you do with it is between God and you. But exactly the same message that Jonah had for Nineveh applies to America today. And interestingly, at the time of Jonah, Nineveh was the global superpower of the day, just like America is now. And the reason for the judgment coming on Nineveh was exactly the same reason as the judgment coming on America today. And because Nineveh was like the global superpower of the time, that is why it was such a daunting task for Jonah to give them the message that the people of Nineveh must repent because if they do not repent, their entire city would be totally and utterly destroyed. And the fact that Jonah's message to Nineveh is connected to the prophetic warning to America right now today can not only be easily proven in scripture, but it is blatantly there for all to see in what is physically taking place with this April 8th solar eclipse. I assure you, that it is no coincidence that the solar eclipse is passing through seven cities in America called Nineveh. Look, this is what the solar eclipse is saying seven times. Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Repent, America. Repent, America, like the people of Nineveh repented. Repent, America, because you are about to be totally and utterly destroyed. And this solar eclipse is the final warning to repent. Because this eclipse actually marks a transition in the spiritual realm, where the time of grace, where judgment has been delayed, to give his people more time to repent has come to an end. And we are now transitioning to the point where the hammer of judgment will inevitably fall. There are going to be earthquakes and other similar events in nature that our Father will also try to use as a wake-up call of warning to the people of America and to his church worldwide. But those are like the birth pangs before his judgment falling 
in the destruction of America. The solar eclipse is not a warning about those earthquake events, etc. The solar eclipse is pointing to the soon coming total destruction of America. The people of Nineveh chose to repent. Right from the king and leadership of the country down to all the people. And they got rid of all their Babylon ways and idols. And as a result, they avoided God's judgment. In exactly the same way, do you know that it's still possible for America to avoid this terrifying and devastating judgment that has been pronounced against her in the word of God? Yahweh would revoke his sentence if the whole nation would be willing to teshuva, which is the Hebrew word for repentance. If the whole nation would be willing to repent for their participation with the beast system as the harlot of Babylon, who has been used to carry out the Antichrist agenda of Babylon. The government and political leaders would have to hold a national day of prayer and fasting, where they come before Abba Father and repent for the immorality of Babylon that they were a part of, naming each thing specifically. And following that, remove all the obelisks and the Freemasonic occultic monuments and all idols of Babylon that saturate the country and destroy all of those idols until there is no trace of them left. Get rid of and cleansed of Hollywood that has polluted the earth with every foul demonic spirit and spiritual filth of Babylon. Get rid of the pornography because America is both the producer and consumer of 90% of the world's pornography, including child pornography. Get rid of the demonic music industries of the world that has been used to draw the global population into spiritual Babylon. Much like Hollywood has been used to spread the abominations of Babylon throughout the earth. And interestingly, in the passages of scripture that prophesy about America's attack, it specifically mentions how the music industry is especially targeted for destruction. To avoid judgment and destruction, America would have to repent for and get rid of all hidden occult practices of Satanism, witchcraft and child sacrifice, all human trafficking and underground pedophile networks where they are keeping all those hundreds of thousands of children in cages. Make right with and repay all the countries they plundered and made war against on false pretexts and the wars that they profited from and funded both sides and repent for all the bloodshed of the innocent including from the freemasonic owned and run pharmaceutical industry and the millions now dying from the recent greatest genocide in human history is america willing to repent from all the ways of Babylon and respond like the people of Nineveh when they heard the message of God's impending judgment? Sadly, no. They are enjoying the pleasures and luxuries and wealth and power it all brings them too much. They don't want to give up their luxurious, wealthy lifestyle. So, there is only one other inevitable conclusion. This prophecy in scripture of the great and mighty and horrific fall of America as the harlot of Babylon that rides the beast will be fulfilled. The specific length of the April 8th solar eclipse tells you the final outcome. The solar eclipse lasts for exactly four minutes, 28 seconds. And Jeremiah 4 verse 28 gives Yahweh's official statement on this issue. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, 
and I have not repented, neither will I turn back from it. Many other scriptures says the same thing. Jeremiah 5 verse 13, I will bring upon that land all the words I have pronounced against it, all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied. Isaiah 14 verse 24, Yahweh Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will happen. Jeremiah 23 verse 20, The anger of Yahweh will not turn back until he has fully accomplished the purposes of his heart. In the days to come, you will understand this very clearly. The Freemasonic leaders of America don't believe the warnings from Yahweh in the scriptures because they are deceived into serving Lucifer, who is the father of lies. And how the kingdom of darkness and Freemasonry works is they all lie to and deceive each other. The leaders purposefully lie to and deceive the people under them, and the leaders above them deceive them. The Freemasonic political leaders in America are being deceived by the leaders of the beast system they are serving and don't realize that they are about to be betrayed and thrown under the bus. You can tell that the President of America will be caught by complete surprise from Jeremiah 50 verse 43. The king of Babylon has heard reports about the enemy and he is weak with fright. Pangs of anguish have gripped him like those of a woman in labor. Jeremiah 51 verse 9, the earth trembles and writhes in pain, for everything Yahweh has planned against Babylon stands unchanged. Babylon, which is in the scripture, is specifically referring to America, which will be left desolate without a single inhabitant. So I hope you get the message from all of these scriptures that America's destruction is inevitable and imminent. We can't stop what is coming to America because it's coming from the hand of Yahweh as a part of his judgment. As Isaiah 13 verse 6 says, it will come as a destruction from the Almighty. But you can do something about it in your own life and for your family, as well as spread this vitally important message to those that you know and to whoever you can. In Revelation 18 verse 4, there is currently an urgent shouting call from Abba Father, who is calling his people to come out of Babylon. Firstly, this has a meaning for all of us spiritually, where we need to remove all participation with Babylon in our lives through repentance, so that we will not have to experience the judgment coming on Babylon. But for Abba Father's righteous remnant of people actually living in America, this has a practical application as well. Where his message to you now is that it is time to leave the land. To come out of Babylon literally, physically as well. You need to open your heart to the fact that Abba Father may lead you to change your physical and geographical location. Because one of the purposes of biblical prophecy is to give God's people the wisdom and foresight to be in the right place at the right time. If you are living in the United States of America, you may seriously have to start fasting, praying and seeking Abba Father to ask him to give you personal wisdom, guidance and direction, and seriously consider the possibility of moving and doing it as soon as possible. The time to leave is now. But you don't have to leave in a mass panic. You have approximately one year to move before the travel restrictions from the 2025 pandemic come into play. It's a shocking and drastic message, I know. 
But all I can do is be obedient to share it with you, just like it is, straight from Scripture. Because this is nothing less than life-saving. And this is an extremely serious prophetic warning from Scripture. I can't tell you what to do, but if I were living in the United States of America right now, I would get out of there. Because you have seen that after the nuclear bombs landing on multiple major cities at the same time, enemy soldiers will flood the country and kill everybody that they capture, and the whole economy, businesses, and industries will be destroyed. And the whole land will be desolate and a complete and total destruction. And there are multiple verses which say, that after God's judgment has fallen on America, not one single person will be left living there. Not one single person. On the screen, you can see six scriptures that all say this. Every single one of these verses explicitly emphasize that not one person will be left in the land or live there after this attack. And if those scriptures are still not enough to get the message across, here are three more. Jeremiah 51 verse 9, Babylon will be left desolate without a single inhabitant. Jeremiah 51 verse 43, her towns will be desolate, a land of drought and a desert, a land where no one lives through which no one travels. Jeremiah 51 verse 62, Yahweh, you have said you will destroy Babylon so that neither people nor animals will live in it. It will be desolate forever. Do you know what the surface of the moon looks like? That is what the surface of America is going to look like after this attack. Totally desolate and empty. So I would get out of America now, whilst you still can. But having said that, you must never make any impulsive decisions out of fear, because those will always be wrong decisions that lead to destruction. And don't leave because I said so. You must pray, fast, and seek Abba Father, and hear from Him for yourself personally and be led by the Holy Spirit and peace in your heart. The purpose of this video has just simply been to alert you and bring your attention to this prophecy in Scripture, which is about to be fulfilled in the very near future. But the next step that I suggest is that you now listen to the two long videos that I am going to release in the next three to six weeks. The first video gives all the detail from scripture about why America is going to be attacked. And the second video is all the detail in scripture about how it will play out. And what Abba Father's instructions are to his people and his righteous remnant concerning this. We are currently doing a captivating video series on the book of Revelation where we are releasing free videos on YouTube and Rumble, and we also upload them on our website. Until we have explained the whole book of Revelation, which has been a mandate that Abba Father has personally given us, and which we are walking out with him by faith. The next two videos that are coming out are these two videos about the attack on America. So if you want to receive the links to these videos when they are released, be encouraged to go to the Eagles Wings website or to the description below this video and join the Eagles Wings database or alternatively the Eagles Wings Telegram group and then you will be sent the links to the free videos in the Book of Revelation series, including the detailed videos on the attack on America as soon as they are released in the next few weeks. And then once you have heard all the detail in the full message, 
Then you must fast and pray and ask Abba Father to show you what he is personally telling you to do concerning this. If he lays it on your heart to stay because he has a destiny, calling and purpose for you regarding that, well, so be it. But this is what Abba Father says in his word in the chapters where there are prophecies about the fall of America as Babylon. And as you will see, he explicitly says in no uncertain terms to leave the land. Isaiah 48 verse 20 says, leave Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans, which is another word for Babylon. Jeremiah 51 verse 45, come out of Babylon, my people, run for your lives, run from the fierce anger of Yahweh. The New Living Translation says, come out, my people, flee from Babylon, save yourselves, run from Yahweh's fierce anger. The Amplified Bible says, come out of her midst, my people, and each of you escape and save yourself from the fierce anger of Yahweh. Jer Jeremiah 4 verse 6 says, raise a signal flag towards Zion, seek refuge, do not delay, for I am bringing disaster from the north and terrible destruction. Jeremiah 50 verse 8 to 9, flee out of Babylon, Leave the land of the Babylonians, for I will stir up and bring against Babylon an alliance of great nations from the land of the north, which is Russia. Jeremiah 51 verse 6, flee from Babylon, run for your lives. Do not be destroyed because of her sins. It is time for Yahweh's vengeance. He will repay her for what she deserves. Jeremiah 51 verses 40 to 50. Just as Babylon killed the people of Israel and others throughout the world, so must her people be killed. Get out. All you who have escaped the sword, do not stand and watch. Flee while you can. Now, am I going to cause a mass panic with this video and these messages? Well, truthfully, I was worried about that. And I spent a lot of time seeking Abba Father about that. And his answer to me was that, unfortunately, it's only a righteous remnant who ever listened to his warnings. And apart from Jonah, the other biblical story that applies to the coming destruction of America is the story of Abba Father removing his righteous remnant, which was Lot and his family, before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We read about this in Genesis 19, verses 12 to 13. Then the two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, a son-in-law, your, your sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are about to destroy this place. For the outcry to Yahweh against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. In all the scriptures that prophesy about America's destruction, it says that it is going to be like the judgment that fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. We just like Sodom and Gomorrah were brought to ashes and never ever inhabited again. So it will be with America. And just like he removed his righteous remnant of people, which was Abraham's nephew Lot and his family before he destroyed the city, so now, in the end times, Abba Father is sending the same urgent warning and call to his people in America, which is the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, the harlot of Babylon, to get out of the land so that you do not have to experience the terrible destruction that is soon coming upon it. That destruction is intended for the wicked people of Babylon, not for you. Just like Lot had to leave Sodom and Gomorrah before it was destroyed by Abba Father, so his righteous remnant of people in America need to seriously seek, fast and pray about leaving before God's judgment falls on America as Babylon. Let me tell you something very interesting that you may have not heard before. 
in the time just before the Holocaust, in the Second World War, when Hitler rose to power in Germany. There were a few rabbis in Israel who were walking closely with Abba Father, hearing his voice and being led by his wisdom, watching the signs of the times and comparing it with what Abba Father was revealing to them in Scripture. And they saw the writing on the wall of what was coming. And in obedience to Abba Father's instruction to them, those rabbis traveled from Israel to the countries in Europe, warning the Jews in Germany, Poland, etc., about the Holocaust and the genocide that was coming, and giving them a prophetic warning from Abba Father to leave the land and to physically relocate to safer countries. Many people laughed at them and disregarded them as conspiracy theorists. But there were many who did listen to those warnings. They left the countries they were living in, like Germany, Poland, etc., and they moved to safer countries, just packing their suitcases and leaving behind wealthy businesses, houses, and real estate that they owned, because they understood that all of those things are not going to matter, because when you're in a ghetto and a concentration camp, you would lose all of that wealth anyway. They understood that the main thing is that they need to get out whilst they still can, and some of them escaped just in time. I listened to a testimony by this Israeli rabbi called Rabbi Elon Ahava, where he shared the story of how his great-grandfather, a wealthy businessman who owned a lot of real estate in Europe, got the warning and packed their suitcases and left that very night. And they got out just in the nick of time. A few hours later, they would have not managed to escape. They left everything behind and only took a suitcase that each of them could carry. But because they did that, their family was spared from experiencing the Holocaust, along with many others who had the wisdom to listen to God's warnings. And it wasn't just the Jews. Many Christians heard Abba Father's voice and warnings, including my great-grandparents, who moved with my grandmother when she was six years old from Holland to Africa. There is a picture of my grandmother, Ruth Stratum, on the screen when she was in her 90s. And then on the right is a picture of her when she was six years old. Here is a picture of them leaving Holland on a ship to, to Africa nine months before the Second World War broke out. During the Second World War, the town they lived in called Arnhem was completely destroyed. And my family and I would not be here today, and I would not be giving you this message right now if they had not obeyed God's voice to leave. So there were many who listened to Abba Father's warnings to leave the land. But there were those who didn't. And by the time the majority of the masses woke up to realize what was really happening and millions were being killed, it was too late. Many of them tried to flee, but the borders of the country were closed and they could not escape. And they went through the horrors of the Holocaust. The prayer of my heart is that you will have the wisdom to pay serious attention and to listen to this prophetic warning from scripture to you today, that it's time to leave the land of America because God's judgment is coming so that you and your family will be spared the horror and devastation that is coming. Interestingly, Rabbi Elon also shares his personal testimony of how Abba Father showed him through scripture the writing on the wall for America a few years ago already. He was living in New York and with great inconvenience and hardship, he left with his wife and six children. The youngest was a newly born baby at the time and they had no money but in obedience to Abba Father's warnings, they moved to Israel. Although at the time they moved, they did not know anybody there and had no idea where they would stay, what they would do when they get there, 
or how they would earn money for their needs. But they stepped out in faith and trust in Abba Father, and he provided and made a way for them in all the little details as their journey of faith unfolded. Another friend of Rabbi Elon, who also realized the need to leave, phoned him and said, I am so torn, I don't know what to do. My job, my business, my children, it's not so easy to just pack up and leave, you know. And Rabbi Elon said to him, no, it's not easy, but it's much easier than living through the destruction of nuclear bombs, watching your wife and children being captured by merciless soldiers and being taken to a concentration camp. All your finances and business you built up will mean nothing when America falls in a single hour. So one of the reasons Abba Father gave us the scriptures was to give us wisdom, to warn us ahead of time of what is going to happen so that we can have the foresight to prepare accordingly. And this warning may just save the life of many who are listening. When we are walking in a close love relationship with Abba Father, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, like Psalm 91 verse 1 says, where we are fellowshipping with him in prayer daily, he will give us wisdom and discernment and show us the right place to be at the right time. If you are living in America and you are blessed with wealth, this prophetic warning is giving you the wisdom and discernment to no longer have your wealth in the form of US dollars, because the days of the US dollar are numbered, and in a day, a hundred US dollar notes will be worthless paper that people will sweep up with the trash and put in the rubbish bin. Transfer as much of your assets as you can into gold and get your assets out of America. Abba Father has an important end time calling for the businessman in the end times. You were born for such a time as this, and you are going to play a very valuable role in his kingdom. And this is his wisdom to you today. Now, understandably, in receiving a message like this, you are going to want to know the timing of when this attack on America is likely to take place. Firstly, I would like to say, as much as I would like to believe and say that this attack only takes place after the rapture, and therefore the body of Christ doesn't have to worry about this warning, unfortunately, that is not the case. I can't properly explain it here because it's just too much and I need time. So please take the time to watch these two detailed videos about this and give me the chance to prove to you that whether you believe in the traditional pre-tribulation rapture, mid-trib or post-trib, the bottom line is that this event happens before the rapture, even if it is a pre-tribulation rapture that takes place even before the birth pangs. But one big piece of evidence in this video that you have seen regarding the fact that the attack on America takes place before the rapture is the fact that God's instruction to his righteous remnant is to leave the land. If the rapture had already happened before the attack on America, it wouldn't be necessary for God to tell his righteous remnant to leave the land because they would already be gone. But as I mentioned before, God actually uses the attack on America as a mighty great shaking to wake up his people and his church out of spiritual slumber and to start getting ready for his very soon coming return. So the first thing that I can tell you regarding timing is that the attack on America happens before the rapture. And unfortunately, we cannot know the date 100% for sure. And when it comes to end time events, it's never wise to set dates. So I am not setting any dates and I am not stating them as a definite fact. But I might have a rough idea when this attack on America may occur. Based on biblical patterns in scripture, it appears that the attack on America is likely to occur 
on the Biblical Feast of Trumpets at the end of 2025. And this seems to coincide with the plans laid out by the Freemasonic globalist elite, as well as the messages they are projecting in various ways, which seems to indicate that they plan the attack for the night of the 22nd of September going into the 23rd of September 2025. But again, I can't guarantee that this is a definite accurate date. It's an educated guess at best. I could be wrong. But that date of the 23rd of September should start ringing a bell in many people's minds. Just as Abba Father does nothing without first warning his people through the prophets, he has put the same requirement on the kingdom of darkness, where they have to broadcast their plans before carrying them out. But they do it in such a way that it is hidden in plain sight, right in front of your eyes and face, but you don't recognize it. That is how the occult typically works. And they broadcast their plans through Hollywood, through the music industry, at public events, and many different ways. And there's a song that a secular music band sings where the words go, wake me up when September ends. And it is referring to this event. But unfortunately, this is not a nightmare that the people of America can wake up from. So take this message to Abba Father in prayer and trust him to show you what to do. And remember, you can't wait as late as September 2025 to make your move because of the travel restrictions coming in with the 2025 pandemic, which I think may begin to unfold in the season after Passover at the beginning of 2025. One last thing to say is that this solar eclipse makes an X over America with the solar eclipse in 2017, which passed through seven cities in America called Salem, which is pointing to Jerusalem, meaning that not long after America is attacked, the Gog Magog War, World War III, revolving around Israel will begin. The Bride of Christ will be here for some of World War III, but not all of it as the events described in Ezekiel 36 to 38 take place after the rapture. If you want to learn more, have a look at a video on our YouTube channel titled The Timeline of the Seven Key Biblical End Time Wars in the Antichrist Rise to Power. That will give you a good understanding about how these seven key biblical end time wars and all the other main important events in the book of Revelation fall into place in the final seven year timeline. And so, Abba Father, I thank you in faith for opening the ears of your people to hear your voice of warning in this message. And I thank you for giving them all the wisdom that they are going to need in the time ahead. And I give thanksgiving in faith for your provision and hand in every detail of this journey of faith that they are about to walk with you. I come against the spirit of fear, panic, anxiety, and every demonic spirit and principality from the kingdom of darkness from interfering with this message in any way. I bind you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I thank you, Abba Father, that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind the mind of Christ. And I thank you, Father, for your peace that surpasses all understanding to guard your people's hearts and minds. And Abba Father, thank you for covering this message in your glory light, to keep this message invisible to those in the kingdom of darkness, so that this message can get to everybody that it needs to get to. And we commission your ministering angels to take this message and personally deliver it to every single person who is in your righteous remnant in America. 
and thank you, Abba Father, for getting them out safely and in time. And Abba Father, we believe and give thanksgiving in faith that not one single one of your righteous remnant will be left behind. Pray Psalm 91 and Psalm 23 over you and your family every day. Keep your eyes fixed on him. Stay in his word and stay in a deep, intimate fellowship with him in his presence daily. And he will give you all the wisdom that you need.
Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you that we can release a sound. Thank you, Lord, that every feast is a dress rehearsal for your coming, for the feast that needs to come into fulfillment. Thank you, Father, that we can keep ourselves ready when your Son returns. Thank you, Father, that each one of us has a sound to release. Thank you, Father, that we can release a sound so that the people can awaken, that your bride can awaken. Thank you, Father, for open heaven. Thank you for your angels ministering to us. Thank you for your warrior angels. Thank you for the angels that brings messages to us, like in Daniel. Thank you that we can come and drink from your living waters. It's for free. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 